Hello, in this video we want to examine a map t given by t of x, y, z equals x, y, zero. And this is a map from R3 to R3. And there's several things we want to explore. First of all, we want to show that t is a linear transformation. Second of all, we want to find the kernel and the dimension of the kernel. Third, we want to find the range and the dimension of the range. Next, we want to find the domain of t. Then we want to verify the rank nullity theorem. And lastly, write A as a matrix representation of T. Let me just write of T just to clarify that. So a lot of these things are um, connected and we will identify some of those things as we move forward with our example. So first of all, let's verify that we have a linear transformation. So let's say T is a linear transformation because two things hold. So the first thing we need to verify is the addition property. So number one, if we pick any vectors u and v in R3, what we need to show is that t of u plus t of v equals t of u plus v. And that's an easy check, but we do have to go through the computations to show how that would work. So let's let u be a vector in R3. We'll call it x, y, z. And let's let v be another vector in R3. We'll call it a, b, c. And so now what we need to do is we need to check what does t of u plus t of v do? And what that does, well, t of u just sends that vector to x, y, 0. And t of v sends that vector to a, b, 0. And if we add those up, that's x plus a. That's a y plus b and 0. And that's exactly equal to t of u plus v. Okay, and what this shows is that, you know, if you have a domain set in our example, it's R3, and we pick two vectors over here in the domain, and we apply T to both of those. We get T of U and T of V, and we add them up, and we get T of U plus T of V, and that lives over here in our three, lives over here in our in our range. Now, what we've shown via our calculations is that we could have first added them up, adding the U plus V over here and Ting that, and that turns out to be exactly the same thing. So that's really what we're checking when we check this property of addition for linear transformations. The second thing we need to check is that for any scalar, we'll call it k in the real numbers, and any vector u in the real R3, we need to check we need to check that k times t of u equals t of k times u. So let's do that. So we have k, which is a scalar, times t of u, and that equals k times x, y, 0. We've already figured out what t of u does. Multiplying k through, we get kx, ky, and 0, and that is certainly t of k times u. And so this shows that t is a linear transformation. Okay, the next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to find the kernel of t. So by definition, so by definition of the kernel, the kernel is the set of vectors. The kernel of t is the set of vectors in our domain. It's the set of u's that live in R3. It's the set of vectors in R3 such that t of u equals the zero vector. Okay, and so here's our picture. Here's our domain set. We're mapping from R3 
2R3 and there's a bunch of vectors in here some of them map to 0 right? some of them map to other things but the set of vectors that maps to 0 that's what we mean by the kernel of t it's the set of vectors that map to 0 well using our definition this just says that the kernel of t is the set of x, y, z vectors in R3 such that t of that vector gives me the zero vector. And we know what t does, so we're looking for the vectors x, y, z. I'm going to shorten the notation a little bit here. Um, we know what, what our transformation does. In the example we're working on, t of x, y, z just gives us x, y, zero. And so I'm looking for the vectors x, y, z such that x is zero, y is zero, and z can be anything it wants. So this says that x must be zero, y must be zero, and z can be any real number. So z is any real number. And this just turns out to be the z-axis. It's a dimension one subspace of R3. So here's a picture. There's our x, y, and z coordinate system. And what our map does, you know, suppose we have some sort of elliptic paraboloid or something like that, right? What our map t does is it takes any point and just drops it down, it projects it down to the corresponding x, y point with a zero in the z. And so if we drop all those points down, we project them onto the xy plane. What this gives us is it gives us, just using our elliptic paraboloid as an example, it gives us a projection onto the xy plane. And again, this is the xy plane in R3. And so the things that map to zero, right? The kernel is the set of vectors that map to the zero vector. Any of these points, anything on the z axis there, that's going to drop right down onto that origin. It's going to map to the zero vector. So that's why our kernel is just the z axis. That it's a dimension one space. Let's look at the range. So the range of t, we've already explored that, the set of outputs we get. So by definition, the range of t, it's the set of vectors of the form t of u, where u came from your domain set, which for us is our three. So in a picture, here's our domain. Here's our codomain and you've got vectors shooting over to the codomain. So let's label these. But you know it's not necessarily the case that you get every vector in the codomain. So the set of vectors that you do get, your actual output there is what we call the range of t. So this is a nice example up above where we did this projection uh, transformation. We projected things onto the xy plane. We, our output wasn't all of our three. Our output was just the xy plane. So the range of t for our example turned out to be the set of vectors of the form xy0 where we had input values coming from R3. And we discovered that this is just the x, y plane in R3. And that's a 2D, two-dimensional subspace of R3. OK, so we've answered a lot of the questions we set out to do, but let's go back to our original list and see where we're at here. 
So we have so far shown that t is a linear transformation. We found the kernel and the dimension. We found the range and the dimension. The domain of t is just r3, and we've highlighted that before. The, the domain is just the first set we start with there. It's our input values. And last, we want to verify this rank nullity theorem and write A as a matrix representation. Okay. So let's verify the rank nullity theorem for this example. So what we found so far is we found that the dimension of the kernel, and another name for dimension of the kernel, um, that is nullity. The dimension of the kernel and nullity are synonymous. Those are the same thing. So the dimension of the kernel we said was 1. That was our uh, z-axis. So the kernel of t was the z-axis. It was a dimension 1 subspace. We also said that the dimension of the range of t is 2. Now, another word for dimension of the range, that turns out to be rank. And the reason that dimension of the range was 2, that's because our range of t was the x, y plane in R3. And we've also mentioned that the dimension of the domain of t was 3. And that's because our domain set was equal to R3. Now, the rank nullity theorem says that the dimension of the domain equals the rank plus the nullity. And for us, we can verify that because the dimension of the domain was 3, our rank was 2, and nullity was 1. Lastly, let's write a matrix representation of T. So there are three steps involved in doing this. The first thing we want to do is we want to write a basis for the domain of t. And so a basis for our domain, which is R3, a basis for R3 would just be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. These are our standard i hat, j hat, k hat sorts of vectors. The second step is we want to apply the transformation t to the basis elements. And I'll remind you what t does. t takes in a vector of the form x, y, z and it spits out a vector of the form x, y, 0. So it literally copy pastes the first two components. The third component becomes a 0, and that's what drops us down onto the x, y plane. So let's do that. If we apply the transformation t to the vector 1, 0, 0, that means x is 1, y is 0, and z is 0. And so in goes a 1, 0, 0, and out comes a 1, 0, 0. Next, let's apply transformation to 0, 1, 0. And out comes a 0, 1, 0, because in this case, we are putting in 0 for x, 1 for y, and 0 for z. And lastly, let's apply the transformation to our last basis element here, which is a 0, 0, 1. Out comes a 0, 0, 0. Because again, remember that our transformation takes that z coordinate and puts it down on the xy plane, puts it down as z equals 0. The third step is that matrix A consists of column vectors 
obtained in step two. So here we go with matrix A. Matrix A looks like the first column is going to be this one, zero, zero, second column, zero, one, zero, and the third column is a zero, zero, zero. Notice some very important connections between A and the transformation. So the rank of A, we have two leading ones, and that is exactly the dimension of the range of T, because those are the same thing. Next, we notice that the number of free variables or skipped columns, that is our nullity, so the nullity of A is equal to 1, that's the dimension of our kernel. So those are the same quantities. And the other thing I'll mention here is that um, the dimension, I'll just write it this way, the number of columns of A, let's see, we had total number of columns here, we had three columns total, number of columns of A, that's exactly equal to the dimension of the domain of T. And the reason that that's the dimension of the domain, that's how we got those columns, right? We had to choose a basis for the domain that led us to choose three vectors and that's why we ended up with three columns in A. And this is a nice demonstration to observe that the number of columns of A consists of whatever number, but you, you get those columns either having a leading one, so you get the number of columns of A equals the number of columns of A with a leading one, plus the number of columns of A without a leading one. And the number of columns of A with a leading one, this is our rank. The number of columns without a leading one, that is our nullity, it's the number of free variables or the dimension of the kernel. And the number of columns of A, that's the dimension of the domain.